Hi everyone, this is Steve Williams, president and founder of the creditrepairshop.com and in today's video, we're gonna answer a question that we've been seeing all over the message boards, that we've been getting in the email box, and it's having to deal with credit card debt. But first, let me take a, a drink of water. Who does this remind you of? Remember the other day on TV when he, when he, when uh, President Trump took a drink of water? Why, number one, why are people struggling to get it and they're trying to look at the camera like people are, you know, like somebody just going to reach out and grab them or something. And then the way that they drink, they'll be like this. Who drinks by throwing their head back? I don't know. Maybe some people do. All right, let's get serious. Let's talk about it here. Uh, we're going to talk about a credit card debt because a lot of people are getting uh, bills in the mail or they're getting done in letters in the mail saying that they owe a credit card debt from the past. And here's an example. Well, this is a, a real one that someone just got and they had uh, sent it up to the office. And it's in the first thing that I had them check on there that my staff checks is the origination date of that credit card bill. And the origination date was 2004. And then the next thing we looked at is was when was it closed? And it said that it was closed in 2009. So uh then the next thing is we when we looked at the closed was it when they closed it what is the next thing that we want to look at is to see what was the write off the write off date or the charge off they'll use both of those terms and so once we saw those dates it was still within uh, 2009. It was a, one of the months in 2009. So now, the next thing that we had to go over with, with the client was we wanted to see was there a judgment? So no judgment. Or yes. And I'm going to go over the solution on taking care of this credit card debt from 2004 that was closed in 2009 that was writ written off. So now the first thing we're going to go over here with the judgment side. The first thing is once you have that data and the, the person received that letter, they have to do this research first. And, and so the first thing that we told them to do is we're going to look at uh, if they're trying to reclaim a debt that was past statute of limitations because that's what they'll do if there's no judgment then the first thing that you have to do especially if you know that it was back in 2009 uh that's you know uh, that's eight years ago so you want to first see if that debt is past statute of limitations but let me tell you some tricks that they're using to uh to uh pe to reclaim a debt that is past statute of limitations. So they'll send out letters. So they'll send out a Dunning letter, a, a, a reputable credit repair, not credit repair, a reputable debt collector will send out a Dunning letter and that Dunning letter will request that you have the ability to dispute to that debt if you don't believe that it's yours or they don't say this if it's past statute of limitations, which means that you're not legally obligated to pay that debt. But they, the way that they form those letters, you will think that you more than likely have to pay that debt. And so what they'll do is they'll, in the form of a letter that looks like a bill, is they'll ask you, do you believe that this debt is yours? Which they're really saying that, do you, do you believe that you're still legally obligated to pay that debt? And then if you are, they leave a little, a little form for you to send in the payment. Or they'll send you a bill, out and out send you a bill and request that you make a payment. Or they will send you a letter saying that, do you owe this debt or do you not owe this debt and the reasons why. They'll say, uh, if you believe that you were a victim of ID theft or do you believe that you only owe part of the debt or you're disputing the whole debt because it was paid. Now, 
So we, we have those. So the first thing is they're going to send that Dunning letter. And then they're going to make those requests. So you, what you're going to do is you're going to look at the statute limitations for your particular state. So whatever state you live in, you need to look at the statute of limitations. In the state of Wisconsin, we have a six-year And we have a, for verbal, well, we have a six and six. Some states have three years, some states have four years, it just depends. Uh, but we have a six-year statute of limitations on a debt. And I'll take that back because they did change that. So we have a six for verbal and seven for contract. So first, you want to make sure that all of that does not... Uh, break the law with them coming after you for that debt that's not a judgment that is not past statute of limitations. If it is past the statute of limitations and you have your credit reports and you see that there was no contact to try to get that debt from you to try to contact you about that debt so there's no paper trail, then the statute of limitations is the only thing that you should be arguing. You should not argue anything about the debt. You should just say that it's past the statute of limitations and that they, if, you, if they contact you again about it, that you consider it harassment and that you will contact your state attorney general. But it has to coincide with that. Now, the next side here is if it is a judgment, you want to first make sure that the debt is yours. So is, because it could be something from ID theft. It could be something that a family member uh, did and they put it in your name. You never know. Uh, that could be the reason why you didn't get the judgment paperwork. You didn't get the summons. Is because it really isn't your debt. The next thing is you need to ask for a full validation. Ask for a full validation of the debt. And the reason why you want to do that is because if it is a debt that's yours and it's proven yours, the next phase that you're going to have to do is you're going to have to negotiate a settlement. Now, let me point out some things here with the full validation. The reasons why you want to make them validated, even if you know that the debt is yours, you want to make them validated if a collection agency is coming after you is because, and, and I learned this by accident, is that you can find out how much they paid for that debt, especially if it's credit card debt. They don't sell them credit card debts one at a time. So you, what happened to me, this is exactly what happened to me when I validated the debt uh, way back, it was like 1996, I believe. I validated a debt and it was for a credit card that I had when I was in the Army in 1988. And uh, what happened is when I validated it, and I didn't even know I was validating, I just uh, made the request when I went to court, they gave me all the documentation, a whole list of people's accounts that they had purchased. And when I saw my account, I had saw that they had purchased it for, for only $10. So they had bought all of these credit card accounts and I think at that time I had only owed, uh, uh, the credit card at most was $500, but they had claimed that now all the fees and everything, that it was uh, the amount that I owed was over $3,600. So I wasn't going to pay no $3,600. But when I got that validation, uh, I had saw that they had only paid $10 for the debt. So then that put me into a very good situation to negotiate with that uh, with that attorney for that. Also, you want to get all the information from the original creditor because if the original creditor did not uh, provide all of the documentation to prove that it is yours, you could either use a strategy to lock it up in court to say that this could possibly be ID theft because they did not give you all the appropriate paperwork to prove that that original creditor, that that document uh, that they gave to the collection agency all the information to get the judgment was true. So you can use that to lock it up. And now let me give you an example of what happened with a credit card company with 
a customer of ours. I have that testimonial uh, on my website, on our testimonial page, and it shows where he had a credit card debt from Citibank for $32,000. And because we ran it through this process here, we ran it through this process here with statute of limitation. It, was, it wasn't past the statute of limitation, so they could have came after him for the money, but we did a full validation requesting all of the signatures for every charge that they claim he made, and they ended up doing a cancellation of the debt. Now, uh, let's skip over to here. When we look at a cancel, so first, if you validate and they provide all the paperwork, then you go into negotiations. Hopefully, you'll get to see what they paid for the debt, but it'll put you in a good position to negotiate on that debt. Now, when you get the information, you want to make sure that the original creditor did not forgive the debt, and it, you'll know if they forgave the debt. A lot of people get these two mixed up. They think that if the creditor read all, had wrote off the debt or charged off the debt, that they forgave the debt. No, that, that's just something that they have to do legally uh, for tax reasons, for tax purposes. But f what you're looking for is you're looking for a 1099 form cancellation of debt. If they had ever sent one of those out, you can request that in that validation to see if the uh, if the credit card company did a full uh, did a, a cancel 1099 cancellation of debt because if they did that they cannot they cannot uh, send that to a collection agency because they're going to file 100% on uh, the money that they lost on that credit card. So you want to make sure that you, uh, when you make your validation, that you include that you also want to make sure that the original creditor did not do a 1099 cancellation of debt. If everything checks out, it will still put you in a better situation to settle uh, your outstanding credit card that you have that that they may have uh, got to be a judgment now before I finish up I want to go over uh, email that I just got from a debt collection uh, a, a, a debt collection company that sells debt to other debt collection companies uh, for the month of November they're going to be selling they have available six million six hundred and twelve thousand seven hundred eighty nine dollars and seventy eight cents worth of bad credit card debt and what i have here a list is for almost every state in the united states that they're going to be going after people that had old credit card debt uh the top states is texas with 1.2 million new york one one million four one million forty thousand in California with 3,267,000. Those are the top states and then the rest are just sprinkled in uh, with the other states. So when you start getting letters, if you know that you possibly had something in the past that might come back at you, uh, and you don't have to, this could work for a medical bill, it can work for anything that's a collection that someone is trying to come after you for. And all it does is it puts you in a better situation and number one, it, it if they are past the statute of limitations, you do not have to pay that bill. I don't care. They might try to say you have a moral obligation. Moral obligation is not a legal obligation to pay. You only have to pay legal uh, bills that are le that you're legally obligated to pay. And if it goes to a judgment, then this is a strategy that you need to use to accomplish uh, getting that debt paid off at a cheaper rate dealing with a debt collection company. So if you have any questions, post them below the video. Please visit our website, thecreditrepairshop.com. We have a membership site and we have a, a side where we do all the work for you. And I hope that you found this uh, video instructional and thank you for your time. This again is Stephen Williams, pr president and founder of thecreditrepairshop.com. Thank you.